So the big idea will be to look at, first of all, some examples of, of videos. And what we can do is follow along here if you'd like, or I will just uh, play them for you. Let me check my sound. Okay, we have a little sound here. Okay, so uh, on your desktop in uh, we've got the web design folder. If you'd like to go in here, this is also on Blackboard at the moment, but if you go to the web design folder on the desktop, and then you will see our class, CIS257. You can open uh, CIS257, and then you will see CIS257-12 YouTube. It's the 12th assignment. So you can copy from the web design folder to your desktop, and once you get a copy of that, we can uh, we can read. Yeah. And no, it's just a PDF. We already worked with the video examples. You just want the PDF, CIS257-12, YouTube. So once you get a copy of that, we'll look at it here. So did you know that the very first YouTube video was taken at the San Diego Zoo? So it's still, uh, it's still up online, and it's just like uh, 15 seconds long. Well, the very first video was shot at the San Diego Zoo, the very first YouTube video uh, in 2010. So YouTube's 10 years old. YouTube's a, a decade old, even though it feels like it's always been around, it's technically only 10 years. So it has, I don't know the exact statistics, but it's got hundreds and hundreds, if, if not millions of hours of video. And I see statistics that say like every hour there's a thousand new hours of video uploaded. Uh, so what we'll be doing is uh, using YouTube uh, for you to create at least one video. Together, last time we learned how to use the software, so then that's the tool. It's then up to you to create a video. So here's some quick instructions about creating your YouTube account. If you've already got a uh, Google Plus account, then it's really easy to add onto the Google Plus account a YouTube account, so you'll need to do that. And then the actual tasks of the assignment as always, uh, fill in the profile information, the biography, the photo, and such. You're going to need to give me, you're going to need to send me an email with your YouTube address. We'll see where we can get that from. Uh, and then the actual main part of the assignment is you're going to need to create one video at least 30 seconds long of one of the types listed below, which we'll look at together. Uh, you want to uh, upload your video, and we'll see how. And you also then want to um, share it to your social media. You'll be able to automatically share your video from YouTube over to Google Plus and Twitter or Facebook, etc. You're going to start to track your statistics for YouTube, either your subscribers or your views, or both if you'd like. And there's also extra credit. You can upload a second YouTube video of a different type for up to 20% of an assignment. So what I mean by type, if we scroll down here, types of videos. There's six types of videos that I have listed here. This is not the only kinds of videos, but let's take a moment to see some of these. Uh, we've got unboxing, screen capture tutorial, how to review lists and advertisements. Some of these videos kind of bleed into each other. As we will see, a screen capture tutorial could easily be also a how-to video. And a video of lists could also be a review video. But here's some general ideas, and I'm going to pull one of these up first, the unboxing video. So you should be able to click on that. It'll pull up the video. But I'll play it here since I have the sound. For a limited time at Chili's, mix and match for heat. After the ad, then we will see the, the video that we came for. Say hi to each other. Mm. <laughs> the How you doing? Good to 
to see Lamar Wilson here and I have some bad news. My car is in the shop, guys. It is, I, I pushed it too far. I put. This one is the unboxing video, although he spends some amount of time, you know, talking to the camera and being personal, but this is unboxing. Ooh, we're gonna unbox those in a second. And then I went to the UK because this book from a UK and cards and corresponding. So the unboxing type of video, and he's got a certain style. Lamar's a, a very cool channel. He talks a lot about technology and such, but basically an unboxing video is literally, I'll, I'll put it over here. Japanese amiibo that is Mewtwo, which is a Pokemon. And so, okay. Um, I think so. Ooh, nice tail. <laughs> That's a literally unboxing right there. We'll see other examples. But an unboxing video, in short, is that you open up a product. Now, he's spent about two minutes before he even unboxed it. Obviously, he could have started at the very beginning. And there's such a range of this kind of video that you wouldn't believe it. Now, here, he's got 22,000 views on that. So you may think, well, he's opening up a toy, and 22 people are watching that? Basically, yes. And he's got 1,400 likes, 16 uh, unlike 16 down votes so a lot of people like pokemon a lot of people like how his style is let's see a little bit more i'll say that to me okay um look at okay so he i i'm i will almost say some controversial he's really a ba bachelor's in arts <laughs> you know what i actually meant Mebo number two was interesting because you're like lamar you have rob and i said like, i do but i don't have the japanese one this is the japanese rob they made two versions of the game, uh, of the toy, when it came out. It was one for Japan and one for the uh, the States. This is the one for the States. It's a different color. And you, you see, you, it clear, and I was almost like... Okay, so here's an example of an unboxing. Let me do this. I will search on top here. Unboxing iPhone 6. Just the first one that came out. The first result that came up. And I'm just going to pick any one of them, really. iPhone 6 rose gold unboxing. Hmm. I don't know what that was. Okay, so yeah, I have the iPhone 6S today, and we're gonna open it, and I usually have difficulties opening boxes, so I just brought my little, you know, tweezers to hand, because I don't have scissors, because I'm poor. Um, but yeah, I covered, if you guys are wondering why there's lipstick on the package, it's because I covered up my address, because um, I was broadcasting, which I'm broadcasting right now, so if you don't follow me on YouNow, go down in the link below and fan me on YouNow, because, you know, legit about to cry. You open the box, this is what it looks like, and I'm freaking dying inside right now, like I'm legit about to cry. Um, okay. So, now it's this beautiful box with some amazing... So, so yes, let's these videos are literally someone unboxing, opening the box of something. A, a toy, a video game, a phone, a microwave, a, um, an air heater, anything. And you might think, well, who's going to care about this? This video's got 12,000... 500 views, 348 likes, 85 unlikes. So, like I said, unboxing dishwasher. Let's see here. Here's our unboxing of our Bosch SHX 68T55 UC dishwasher, uh, better known as the 800 series. We just picked this up today. We'll see what comes in the box. So the point of these unboxings, okay, you might watch it yourself, and maybe it's entertaining, maybe you're going to learn something, maybe you're trying to decide on one of these products to buy, and then you're going to see what it comes in the box. So YouTube, we have two big purposes for it, as a consumer or as a creator. You've probably used YouTube for years as a consumer. You're going to watch YouTube, you're going to consume videos, you're going to watch another one, and another one, and another one. And so on this type of video, maybe I'm learning, maybe I'm thinking of buying that one, the Bosch Dishwasher 800. And I want to see, is it hard to set up? What's in the box? And that sort of thing. Because these types of videos, any of these types of six videos, can be such variations in that here, okay, it's an unboxing, but he's probably also talking about why it's so good, and the BTUs, and how expensive it was, and what kind of family it's good for, etc., etc. So in a sense, it's almost also kind of like a review. If you've got your own company, your own product, you can think about ways 
for you to create an unboxing video. Let's say I am a um, I'm a graphic design company and I want to show examples of my company's product design. I could show then these uh, these boxes, these letterheads, these uh, stationery and such that my company creates uh, when we mail them to people when we ship them out. The opposite side is well what if I sell a product and I put it in a nice box and so forth and I ask the um, I ask the consumers, hey, share your unboxing videos to get featured. Because there's many people out there that want that internet fame, that fleeting, ever-moving internet fame. And so one possibility is to ask your, your fans, your followers, your, your buyers, you do an unboxing video f of, about us. You do a review video for us, and we'll feature you, we'll retweet you, we'll, we'll share you. And that's enough of an incentive for many people to get creative and share, and that gives you free advertising. At the end of this video, it was pretty short, 1 minute 58, and that one's got 625 views, uh, no, no likes or unlikes just yet. Uh, but then at the end of the video, I stopped it, but nowadays YouTube has this autoplay feature um, right here, autoplay. It's on by default unless you turn it off. You watch one video and that will automatically go to another one. Very much related. Well, if you create more and more videos and you upload them, you could be featuring yourself in the autoplay. Right now I was looking at Darren Lane's channel. He's got five subscribers. And when this is, video is done, it's going to go to this next one. Stephen Lavin Morley Reed. Uh, and then when that one's done, it's going to go to 800 Tech. When that's done, it's going to go to Curious Appliances, etc. So if you are creating content, putting videos out on a regular basis on YouTube, let's say once a month is a good goal, the more of these videos you put out related to each other, the more you will be featured when someone watches your video to watch another one of your videos. Or if someone watches a video of something you're related to, your video could show up on the autoplay. So again, what's the point of YouTube? What's the point of Twitter? What's the point of uh, Google Plus, Pinterest, uh, Periscope? All of these things, it's a way to advertise, to reach an audience, um, to get some fame or whatever you're trying to do online. Get donations for your, for your Kickstarter, etc., etc. So this is the unboxing type of video. Let's see what else. Unboxing... PCXT. Unboxing this game. Unboxing an old Atari, old floppy disks, etc. So this is the unboxing video. We've seen the different styles of of quality. This guy Darren Lane, very uh, amateur kind of video, not in a negative way, but just amateur in that. First of all, he's got vertical. He's, he's recorded it vertically, which uh, I won't decrease your grade, but I will get annoyed. Don't record vertical video because look at how narrow that looks. You can't see anything. Look at these black bars, this empty space here. So even though it's so easy to pick up your phone and record vertically, don't do it. You want to record horizontally so you have a nice wide shot. Let me back up to the previous video. Okay, so um, so here, uh, Carly Steele, uh, hers is a little more professional. Do you see that transition that went from one scene to another scene? And it's also not a full, uncut, long recording. Uh, she does something and maybe cuts out the silence and then starts on another part. So a little bit more effort there. The camera is also on a tripod. It's stationary. It's in focus. The light is pretty good. And uh, so this is a, is a higher level up from the first, uh, from, from that dishwasher video. Uh, but the same sort of idea, showing a product, giving opinion, maybe a review. And then back on the first video with Lamar, this is even more professional. He's got a little opening animation there with his own, own song and graphics. Then he's got 
a nice looking camera, focused, good light. It's, there's his set. And then he, he's a real showman for the camera. So there can be a variety of different qualities in, the, in, in these videos. But it's about the content also. So any questions on the unboxing video? All right, if we look back on the, on the homework here, I'm going to look at the screen capture tutorial. Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos and we're going to talk about Android development. Now, we need three pieces of software, basically, to get this all working. So we're going to go to our favorite is... So the screen capture type of video is where usually some sort of technology, some sort of computer software, is, um, is, uh, is the point and so, for example, here, this is a video that I did uh, for one of my online classes about developing an Android app. What I'm doing is showing step-by-step step on the screen, go to this website, download this software, install this, do that. I'm basically sharing my screen, what everything that I'm doing on the screen, everything uh, I'm speaking is also being recorded. The software that I'm doing, that I'm using for this, is the same software that I use for this class, if you'd like to know. It's this software right here. It's called Open Broadcaster Software. It's free. It's for Windows. It's for Mac. And basically, it records your screen, your video camera, if you have one, and your microphone, your voice. So I use it in this class, and I used it in this example. I want to show something on my screen. I record it. In this case, it's a tutorial on how to set up an Android software. Uh, 126 views, you can subscribe, 122 subscribers, a like or a thumbs down. That's one example. If I look at on the side over here, autoplay, well in my case it saw that I was looking at some videos about dishwashers and whatever, so it suggests that. But then it also suggests more of my videos. If you, it says if you like that video, you might also like this one about Android, and this one, and this one. So again, the more videos you put out, especially on related topics, the more you will be featured so that people can watch your videos. Uh, I'm just going to jump to a random one over here, plug in on WordPress. Let me play this one for a moment. Chào các bạn, giờ mình sẽ giải thích lại cái vấn đề về giao diện hồi sáng mình đã nói là so he's working in uh, WordPress, uh, plug-in on WordPress, and again, he's got his screen recorder, everything he does on screen is being recorded, what he's explaining will be showed there, so it's step-by-step -step instruction. This one's one hour and one minute long, so you can have video, YouTube videos, I believe, as short as one second. And as for the length of time, I don't believe there's a limit anymore. There used to be a limit of YouTube videos of 10 minutes, and then it went 15 minutes, and eventually they took away the, the limit because I've uploaded a YouTube video that is three hours long. Uh, it took a while to upload. But you can create videos of any length. The problem, of course, is, is someone really going to stick around to watch an hour-long video? They will probably jump around as, um, as necessary to the different sections. And this one's got 77 views. 77 views with three likes. Let's see, here's another one. So YouTube, of course, is global. Here's Los Siete Mejores Plugins WordPress. So another WordPress video con ustedes a través de estos tutoriales de web para novatos en este caso si ustedes vienen siguiendo nuestro canal eh, número uno como verán hemos cambiado a windows 8 ya que eh, nos permite utilizar este programa que es camtancia studio no pude hacer so same sort of concept he's mostly recording the screen he's also got music in the background talking about what he's going to do and um, getting to it he's talking about these plugins what 
The one that I recommend is this one right here called Open Broadcaster Software. OBS. Mm -hmm. So there's many ways to record the screen, and the point of it is to show something, um, some sort of software, some sort of computer thing. This is also a possibility. Let's say I am a graphic design company, and I want to um, put out some free videos on how to do something on, on WordPress, on Photoshop, on uh, Illustrator, Flash, etc. Uh, that would be the screencast type of video, and there's lots and lots and lots of these out, of course. Let's see the suggestions here. Any other suggestions? Uh, using Font Awesome. Ivan Garcia talking about using uh, Yoast plugin. Michael Nelson talking about premium WordPress themes. And you see the different ranges. Two minutes long, nine minutes long, an hour long. You see this one here. Okay, the style of this one is he's not even speaking. He's got some sound in the background, but he's showing what he's doing on screen. And that's another kind of, that's another variation of this kind of video. He's got 3,000 uh, 3, views on that, 47 likes and 3 dislikes. And there's, of course, uh, comments. People can add comments. Any questions on the uh, screen capture tutorial style of video? Okay, back on the instructions. The third one, a how-to video. Let me load this one up. I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone, and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First, you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There's several different ways you can plant tomatoes. You don't need a huge yard to grow your own food. You can. All right, so here's a how to video. This is not always about technology and such. Here is a how to plant tomatoes. How to plant tomatoes. It's got 57,000 views, 93 likes. Um, and this is one of the more professional ones, also, in that there's different camera angles. There's a shot where it's static. There's a shot where it's close up on her face. There's a shot where there's close ups of the dirt and and blurriness and that sort of thing. There's music in the background. There was text here and there. There's right there. There's text. There's a photo that we zoom into. Um, so then, like here's some action. Tomatoes are one of the few plants that can be planted very deep all the way up to here because all these tiny little bumps are so on the how-to video it's just about how to anything computer stuff here's some garden stuff how to cook um, how to change a diaper etc 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 how to do just about everything so that's one of the things about YouTube that's one of the things about YouTube in that it's if you don't quite think about it like this, it's a social network, it's a search engine, and by some measures, it's the biggest, it's the second biggest search engine after Google. Because I can go to YouTube and look up how to do this, how to do that, and I'll find so many results. Let's see what it suggests to me. How to design potted plants. <coughs> how to plant a citrus tree. It's giving me more suggestions on particular videos. I'm, bunch, I'm jumping between a different, different bunches of them, uh, so it's kind of giving me random things. But if I was looking for a particular topic, uh, it would really guide me toward um, what I was looking for. Let's see this one about citrus tree. With E.B. Stone. Today we're going to be learning how to plant a citrus tree. Citrus trees can grow 5 to 25 feet tall, so you may need a bit of space, but they produce delicious tasting fruit. 
Some of my favorite citrus include Meyer lemons because they're very sweet. I love Valencia oranges because they're great to make fresh orange juice. So uh, same sort of style in that there's different camera angles, there's close-ups of photos, there's music, handheld shot, text on the screen. All of the things I would regard as this as one of the styles of best videos. It's very interesting to look at. And everything that's done here, basically, we learned how to do. Last time we were looking at the video editor. Uh, we can add text, we can add music, uh, titles. Uh, the big challenge, of course, is recording the footage. Now, I, I don't know what kind of camera was used here, but really, uh, these cameras that we have in our pockets are really good. These are HD quality nowadays, so visually, you can record really well. The problem with, with your phone camera oftentimes is, uh, notice how far away here the shot is but her voice still comes out well. Usually on a cell phone, when you're that far away, the voice is going to be really low and you're not going to be able to hear anything because you're so far away. So that's one of the big drawbacks of using your, your plain old cell phone if you're that far away. You're not going to be able to hear things. And a video is basically two important things, visuals and audio. Duh. You're going to hear something, you're going to see something. So if one of those two is not great, you don't have a great video. If you can see it okay, but it's very important to hear her and you can't, it's not a very good video. Conversely, let's say you have great audio. You're close to the subject, it's recording really well, but you're in a really dark place like this. If you were trying to record me here, this light is really bad for me to get recorded in. So maybe you could hear me well, but you can't see me well. And therefore, again, perhaps not such a good video. So that's the big challenge about doing videos. Uh, this kind of video where you need to record people and such, you need to make sure you've got a lot of light and the sound is good. Wash these roots just a little bit so that the tree knows it's no longer in a container and it's free to grow. And then we're going to add this good, rich, organic soil that we created. We saw when we were uh, making the video uh, together, I gave you a few video clips of myself. I was just recording myself like this. And the audio was pretty good except for the first section the video was, was good too because I was you know being close to recording myself I didn't have my my phone you know on a table far away recording myself because then the audio would be bad so that's a challenge always with our videos but this is one of these how-to videos let's say how to fix your doorbell I needed one of these videos recently actually my doorbell didn't work and I figured out how to fix it with with one of these videos. Well, after the ads. Welcome to Tomahawk DIY. Today we're going to take a look at, at a doorbell. Been having troubles with this. It's not ringing. No sound. So that's pretty easy to take care of. So let's step inside and take a look at the doorbell. Once we've found that on the wall, we're going to pull the cover off. And this uh, pin right here is no longer striking the bell. That should be going up and down when it gets wired, but it's, uh, it's no longer functioning. What we're going to do as a simple fix, this is wired up. All right, so here is a how to fix a doorbell. And so here they're recording it handheld. He's probably got his phone. The audio is okay. The video is okay. But he's put this out there and it's got 67,000 views because he created a video of, of something that people really want to learn. Bottom and giving it a ding-dong sound. Oh. There's no uh, real... And if we really wanted the ding-dong, we can get in there. Now that we've uh, cut out the piece, watch the dinger ding both top and bottom bells. Thanks for watching Tomahawk DIY. So this how-to kind of video again could be something like this where you show how to do something in the real world or something on the computer. How to fix a photo in Photoshop. That way then the two kinds of videos could kind of merge together. A how-to video and a screen capture video. 
So this is another possibility of types of videos that you could possibly do for your assignment, the how-to video. Any questions on that one? The next kind, a review. I'm going to check out this review video. Hey guys, Brian Tong here from CNET.com and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole tech world buzzing. We want to really break down... Question. Do we have to share it or do we actually post it? You have to post it at least and then I, I need to be able to check it to give you your grade. But you don't have to share it technically if you don't want people to really see it, but at least myself so I can give you a grade. So this one is a review type of video. Uh, does, uh, has anyone heard of Google Glass? Google Glass was this uh, technology that Google put out that's basically a computer you wear on your face. This little thing right here uh, is a little computer and it's got a video monitor right here, right in your eye. Uh, you look through it and you're going to see like a big screen floating in front of you and it's got voice activated capabilities. So right here Brian is reviewing it. What this is. Now the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these. You had to be part of Google's Explore program and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap. But what this is really for is for developers, uh, you know, people that are trying to come up with new apps and ways to use the actual Google Glass. And what you So another kind of professional video in that he's, there's a cameraman, there's different shots, there's text with some animation, good audio, good video. Uh, there it is looking through it. Glasses on in, <laughs> Kev. I make these look good. Check it out. All right. But the first thing you have to do is, first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on and I'm going to start by saying, OK, glass. OK, let's give this a shot. OK, glass. I have a variety of options and here I'm going to say record a video. And you'll see my screen change and now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey, boys, say what's up. Wave hi. There you go, right? Now, you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, or places. And it does require a data connection, so that means you're gonna have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future, and we've never seen anything like this, but wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? You're gonna kick it later tonight, man? Jay. But really, this is the future, and you know it can only get better. So they're reviewing here that particular product. Uh, this is a little bit older. It's from 2013. Uh, so actually, it never quite took off. But it's got 33,000 views, lots of likes. Uh, reviewing that particular product, I can go in. Um, like over here, we've got CNET hanging out with Nelly and the tech gadgets he loves. So here's a review of tech gadgets he loves. Uh, you can be doing reviews on real products 30 seconds. Um, you can be doing reviews of products of real products of virtual products. Technology and celebrity collide and today I'm hanging with my man Nelly. This is his digs when he's in Southern California and you know what? He's a St. Louis boy so I have to find out what Nelly has to have with him. What kind of technology keeps him rolling when he's on the road. So let's go inside. Without your laptop, without your Mac, <laughs> right, right. you know, I think that's I think that's probably the hardest thing to do outside. Three hundred. Oh wow. Okay. They run about three hundred. Nothing better happen to you too. <laughs> and then, of course, the MacBook. You yeah, gotta, MacBook. You have you have your MacBook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not the first, nor will I be the last to to need a big Mac. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so we're here reviewing other technology from a celebrity, and uh, you can review cars. You can review. Uh, just about everything. So again, thinking about it the, in the opposite terms, instead of you yourself um, reviewing something, what about if you've got a product and then you ask your followers, review this, review my product, and we'll retweet you. Uh, give us your opinion on this, and we'll feature you on our website. So some enticement for some free advertising from your followers. That's the review type of video. Let me look at lists. The lists type. Oops, unavailable. Hmm. Okay, let's say this top 10 
WordPress. Top 10 WordPress themes. Hi, hi, hi. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. I'm Corey Ashton here at Webtegrity in beautiful San Antonio, Texas, ready to walk you all through my favorite top 10 free responsive WordPress themes. All right. So before I get started, I want to say a quick thank you to our awesome. All right. So this is going to be, in one sense, a mixture of a review a top 10 list or top 5 or top 2 or 3 whatever the number doesn't matter but you've got some amount of things that you're going to say this one is good but then this one is the best any number will work and so it's also mixed in with uh, a bit of screen uh, the, the screen capture type of video because uh, we see her here and she's talking about the the favorite themes but then switches over to actually viewing them with their documentation, messed around with their um, options and how you customize the theme. For the most part, I am vetting every single one of these. I think they're pretty fantastic. So as of April 2015, if you're looking at this video right now and it's six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, down the road, I might have created another video with newer versions of what I will. So at that point, that one, uh, at that point in time, those might have been her top tens and then later on, she changed them so she could do another video. Within the video description, you can have text, you can have links. So I haven't mentioned that yet because we're looking at the video, it's very visual. But on every video, you can have a title, which describes the video, and you can have a description, which is any text or links. So these links here can be active links to other videos, other websites, whatever. So here's the full list of them, here's the sponsors. Etc. So you can take advantage of that, of those uh, descriptions and title fields. You've also got a field of keywords, which I don't see here, but you can also add keywords to get your video found. Let's say top 10 vacation spots in the world. If you're planning a round-the-world trip, you'll need an itinerary. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 must-visit cities around the world. For this list, we pick cities... So obviously this video, again, is another one that has a lot more production values, a lot more professionalism, many, many shots of the different cities. There's the text, there's the narrator but it's basically a countdown list. I could set up my phone right here and just talk to the camera and talk about my top 10 uh, bucket list cities of the world that I want to visit one day. Same thing. Add a little text, add a little music, little branding, and my video could also be um, you know, very highly viewed. This channel right here already has a lot of subscribers, therefore 407,000 views there with 9.6 million subscribers. So on our YouTube channels, we have the concept of subscribers, whereas we have followers on Twitter, let's say. We've got like or followers also on, um, uh, on let's say, Pinterest. We've got likes on Facebook, etc. Here on YouTube, we've got subscribers. So when we create an account, people can subscribe. So we have lots of subscribers, lots of likes, lots of views. And they're talking about a top 10 list of, of destinations. It's a taste of authentic Germany, a meeting place of old and new, charm and Olympic games, and stunning architecture everywhere you All right, so um, the next kind of video uh, would be advertisement, like a classic commercial. And Commercials range um, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 2 minutes, etc. Uh, there's no real set uh, limit. There's no real set limit, minimum or maximum for any of these kinds of videos. Some of them naturally will be longer, like a review or a how-to, 
but some of them can be pretty short, like the unboxing, the lists, or the advertisements. It's really about the content. So actually, let me show you here an advertisement. Uh, as I've said before, not only do I teach classes, but I'm also part of a company where we do websites, social media, and so forth. And here I'll show you a video that we did for a local Italian food restaurant. It's on 3rd Avenue, so let me play this video. So everything that you saw in this video, again, could be accomplished in what we learned last time. Uh, this is a video that we did for this uh, Italian food restaurant in on 3rd Avenue, Italianissimo Trattoria, very, very good food. And um, we did a series of a few videos here to show off behind the scenes of making a meal and such. So this one, I, I personally shot this one uh, with my Canon. Uh, Rebel camera. It's one of these, you know, big professional-ish cameras, which shoots photo and video. So it's HD video, and with the particular lens, I was able to do the the focal the focal point. Notice parts of it are blurry and parts of it are in focus, like over here when the scene changes. Let me back up right here. So right here, I recorded. You see that how the how the uh, pan goes onto the fire, it was out of focus. Out of focus, And then over here, what I did was I, I moved the camera closer, it's out of focus, it's in focus. It's just different styles of, of ways to do this. And so when my company did this for them, we wanted to show the food, the process of it, and then at the very end, here's the complete meal. Hopefully it makes you hungry. And then what's the point? Great video, what's the point? Come to the website, come to the restaurant, buy it order it, enjoy it. So that's one example. From that same client, we did another one very similar in that style. Same sort of concept, different shots in the kitchen, the uh, Italian-style music, uh, close-ups of the food, uh, blur effect, and at the very end, uh, like a pan into the food, and then a close-up zoom and such. Um, so this was a series of a couple of videos that we did for that client. And again, um, the content is one thing. The um, technical aspect is another. Last time when we were learning uh, the software, Windows Movie Maker, uh, I showed you techniques that we could apply to something like this, where on that shot, for example, the chef was piling... the chef was putting the scallops into the dish obviously in a long sequence and then what I did was I went in I and I cut parts out you notice how there's a jump jump and a jump and a jump to kind of compress the time and then the, the final the salmon so everything that we talked about in in that day that we did the the videos together you can apply here it's really up to you about the concept and the content um, this one people ask well how long does this take we recorded all of these different shots and other shots probably for two hours at the most. We were at the restaurant while they did their cooking and such, and we were there at the most two hours. But then what often takes a, a while as well is the editing. You have all of these angles and shots and such, and you want to cut them together. You want to edit them together to give you some interesting, coherent video. 
and basically you have the idea uh, or you have the technique of are you going to plan your video first and then record or are you going to record first and then make a video from it both ways can work oftentimes I find myself recording video and then making a concept out of them which might not be the best for everyone but I find that I, I record different videos, different shots and such, look at all the videos, and then I form an idea of how I can edit it together. And that's what happened with these two videos. I didn't know it was going to look like this. I didn't know it was going to have this final shot until I started to put it together. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, would you want to work as social media specialist or whatever you name? How do we help our customers promote those videos. I'm, all, I'm more concerned about promoting those videos than producing them. Because I, I had the idea that uh, we as uh, computer people, let's say that, mm -hmm. um, we will not have the, the quality to produce a good commercial for customers. So, but the main Fortune will be those videos. Well, like I said earlier about creating the videos that really can 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 vary if you want like really TV quality commercials and such, oftentimes you do have to invest in some hardware. Your phone from your pocket might not be the best. But let's say okay, you do have some good video promoting it. Well, it's all going to be linked together in that You've got uh, YouTube, maybe you create a YouTube channel today, you have no followers, no subscribers, so no one sees it. But what if you've got 5 or 10 or 20 followers on Twitter or Instagram or uh, Periscope, etc.? You're going to also use what audience you have on the other networks to drive traffic here. I could tweet and say, check out our latest video. So we could get 20 views from that one. The more views you get, the more that your video is also shown. So then I also maybe use uh, Periscope. Let's say at the moment that I'm recording all of this stuff, I'm in the background or someone else on the team is on the Periscope and say, okay everyone, this is a behind the scenes of us doing this video shoot. Look for it in a week. So then I'm building buzz on Periscope to get the views eventually on the video. So it's all linked together. You use one network to promote another network. And in YouTube itself, we can do the same sorts of tactics as we did in Twitter, as in, I can create an account here, I can look up videos about Italian food, and then I can go to the comments section and add a comment that says something like, great video, here's ours. So now people that have looked at one video will then possibly see that my video is there also, and they might click it. I don't have to wait for my video to show up here. I can go to other people's videos to promote my video. The downside, of course, is that that other video creator could delete my comment or block me or whatever. But that's not that common. Um, so commenting on other videos, especially popular videos, is useful because then you've got an audience there that you're going to borrow for your own videos. So again, it's another concept of just being active on social media, using every network, commenting, following, all the tactics we talked about on Twitter could apply to YouTube as well, not just creating the videos, following other accounts, commenting on other accounts, linking my video on other people's comments, and all of that little by little builds up. Yes? I've seen some tutorials where they tell you that you can optimize a YouTube video. Yeah, that's... that's um, along the lines of what I, what I mentioned a little bit earlier, in that you're going to optimize your YouTube video by what text you write in the description, and uh, in the title, and in the description. Oh. So you can put keywords in your description. Uh, so this one, I've got the name of the, of the, deal, of the dish, Salmone Diavola, special of the day, and then the name of the restaurant. And then over here in the description, I've got these keywords, Italian cuisine, Chula Vista, etc., a link to TripAdvisor, a link to Yelp. So this is how you're optimizing your videos. You're also taking advantage of the text that you can write, the title and the description of the keywords. 
let's make sure this other one here also this is uh, this is in a completely different style this one's got you know better than me preparation of good food is done with the fresh ingredients simplicity in preparation of food which makes the difference and as my mama used to say Canta nella cucina, which means sing while you're doing that and be happy and this is it. God bless America. I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, furthermore, we're about to serve the risotto al nero. Garlic olive oil. We sauteed some uh, fresh black mussels. Okay. I'm going to work the rush. Once again, we saw tornado, we saute some fresh black mussels, some calamari, garlic olive oil, jumbo broths. Now, I was saying earlier about your audio and your video. This is breaking some of those rules. The audio is not the best. You hear a lot of noise from the background of the oven and all of that. The video, visually, it's okay, could be better, but this has got 1,200 or 1,300 views. So this is the thing about YouTube. You never know what kind of video or what quality of video is going to take off. Those other two, which we spent a lot more time and effort with music and text and angles and so forth, those are at about 100 views, 120, etc. This one, which is much more cinema verite, which is just, you know, handheld without a lot of effort, 12, uh, 1,300 views. So the point is that YouTube is free. You can create an account, upload as many videos as you want, as much length of time, as much effort as you want to put in. You don't know what's going to be a big hit. Once perhaps one of these videos takes off really well, well, you can always go back and edit the description and take advantage of that. If you're getting this many views, people are going to be looking at your description here. There's a link back to the website, perhaps a link back to another video. Um, you can still capture traffic and attention on a popular video. So only seven subscribers to this channel at the moment. It's got 1,300 views and three, three likes. So just looking at these very quickly, these are the seven videos we've done for them. Right away, you see this one is not so uh, visually, the thumbnail is not that great looking, but it's got the most because you never know. You just want to try it. That's the thing. That's why there's going to be one required video. That extra credit if you do another one. Maybe you get another idea. And the more you put out there, uh, the more <coughs> content, your, the more of your content will be visible on, on YouTube and uh, traffic and such. Any Those questions? Those videos supply? Uh, as long as it falls into one of these six categories. And then again, uh, you've got the extra credit and, and so forth. So ideally, maybe, maybe a new one for just learning and getting better at YouTube. But as long as it falls within the six categories. So uh, any questions about the homework so far? Okay, so on the homework here, I wanted to show you the main idea of these types of videos. And then at the bottom, I've got a couple of links. Uh, if you follow the first link, this will take you to a blog post. Seven tips for creating a professional company branding video. So it's got, um, you know, shoot in HD, use a neutral background, use a tripod, uh, etc. So this itself, this blog post of text, could also conceivably also be turned into a video. I could think about taking this blog post that I wrote a year ago and creating a new video on it. I could set up my tripod and record myself, not reading this line by line, but talking about it, putting in some music in the background, putting in some text, uploading it to YouTube, and then embedding it onto my blog post. Every YouTube video, unless the creator 
deactivates this, but every YouTube video is going to have share. Under share, then you can easily you can easily share it to all the social networks right here. Under share, you can send it to Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc., all of these networks, some you haven't heard of. Or there's a link. That's the direct link to that video. Let's say you've got, you're sending out emails to your customers. Copy that link, paste it into the email, and then now you're driving traffic back to the video. This is on, the share ability is on on all videos unless you turn it off. Then you've also got embed which gives you the code to copy and paste onto your website, and then your video will show up right on your website. This is the code to show your video on your website. You have a few more options that you can play with here, like the size and other things about it that's in bed. Then, of course, send the email in directly, but you need to sign in and so forth. So do you share these videos on, on groups and stuff, communities and stuff like that? Yeah, that's one of the best ways. You create videos on YouTube and then use Google Plus and share them in communities. The cool thing about that is that YouTube will automatically show a thumbnail of the video and they can click to watch it right in the community. They don't even have to leave the community to come back to the video. Then after a while that YouTube see that you have so many views, will they rank you better or something? Yeah. Yeah, it is to some degree that also that popularity breeds popularity. The more followers you get, the more you'll be shown. The more views you get, the more you'll be shown. The more videos you have, the more you'll be shown. If you only got one video, two subscribers, and 100 views, you might not be then as popular as if you added one new video once a month and started to share and so forth. So definitely Google Plus using Google Plus communities to share your videos really works. I have various examples on my own videos, uh, my own personal videos and such, that uh, really works out putting them on Google Plus. And if you, if you didn't know, you can actually make money from your YouTube videos. There's a process called monetization. When you create the account, there'll be a button that says monetize my video. Basically, all of these ads that everyone hates, well, once you become a content creator, you're going to love them because these ads that pop up will make you money. When someone clicks an ad on your video or on the site or whatever, you're going to earn a little bit of money. And not to show off, let me show off. I've made already a cool $11 off of YouTube. Just by uploading my YouTube videos, I've made $11 on YouTube. So the more you do it and the more you followers and views and such, the more you'll make. No joke, one of the most famous people on YouTube um, made $20 million last year from his YouTube videos. So if you want to be like that one day, you have to start sometime. But the great thing is that anyone can create a free YouTube account and now become a creator, not just a consumer. So that's what this, that's what this lesson's about. And then you might think, well, I can't ever make any videos as good as these and such. You will be able to if you keep at it and practice. And then also if you follow the final link there, vimeo.com slash video school. This is their blog about, um, you know, advice on adding transitions, uh, shutter speed, how does that work, video 101, introduction, directing, glossaries and such. So there's plenty of, of uh, tutorials out there. You can even on YouTube search how to make a YouTube video on YouTube and uh, you'll be able to find that. So what I'm going to try is because together we have um, usually done this where we create an account together and I walk you through setting it up and such. For this one, uh, I want you to try on your own first to create the account and then do the homework and such. When we come back next time, we might talk a little more YouTube or maybe change, change, um, uh, change concepts. But that's going to be the assignment. Uh, today, uh, it's, I'm putting it out today and it's due a week from today, so you have a week to create a video, at least 30 seconds long. It doesn't have to be as professional as any of the ones I listed here. 
but obviously the the more you work on these the better you get one video 30 seconds uploaded uh, you get up to 10 points and if you do any other any any other video of a different style you can get 20 percent of an assignment so any questions All right, if you missed the day where we learned how to use the software to create videos, just go back to Blackboard and follow the link there and follow the lecture and uh, you'll catch up. So that's it for the moment. We'll do some lab time till the end of the day if you want to start on this. And uh, when we come back next time, we'll talk more social media. Well,